Assalomu alaykum aziz talabalar va tinglovchilar. Mirzo Ulug'bek nomidagi O'zbekiston Milliy universiteti xorijiy filologiya fakulteti ingliz filologiyasi kafedrasi o'qituvchisi PhD Abdullayeva Nargiza Erkinovna bugun siz bilan amaliy tarjima ko'nikmalari fanidan yangi mavzuni olib boradi. Bu fanimiz 2-kurs 4-semestr uchun mo'ljallangan. Bugungi mavzuyimiz Grammatical Skills in Practical Translation, ya'ni amaliy tarjimada grammatik tarjima ko'nikmalari. Bunda albatta grammatik tarjima, ya'ni grammatik strukturalardagi ko'zga tashlanuvchi tarjimadagi muammolar va ularni qanday hal qilish haqida qisqacha to'xtalib o'tamiz. So, Source language and target language texts differ formally due to a number of reasons of both objective and subjective character. Objective reasons are caused by the divergence in the language systems and uh, speech models. Subjective reasons can be attributed to the speaker's choice of a language form. Thus, systematic dissimilarity of forms takes place when one of the languages lacks some grammar category and therefore has no corresponding form as well. For example, English possesses uh, the morphological categories of the article or the gerund lacking in the Russian language. Whereas in Russian, there is a category of adverbial participle missing in the English language. To translate these forms, one has to compensate them or restructure the sentence. Unique categories in one of the languages can occur at the systematic level as well. There are linguistic phenomena that exist in both languages but differ in some details, which also causes difficulties in translation. For example, passive voice is found both in English and Russian, but in English it is represented by the indirect and prepositional passive construction. For example, he is given a book, he is asked for, but the Russian language has only the direct passive construction. Similar structures in both languages can be used with different frequency in different types of text. Violation of the frequency rate can lead to awkward language usage. For example, an English scientific text utilizes more simple sentences, whereas in Russian one can find an abundance of complex sentences, as we see in scientific articles or books uh, in different subjects. Every student of English has been challenged by the difference between English and Russian, tense and aspect categories. To begin with, in English there are four major aspect groups, simple, progressive, perfect, perfect progressive, showing how the action is performed multiplied by four time indicators, present, past, future, future in the past. In Russian, there are three time indicators called tenses, just present, past, future, and two aspects, perfective and imperfective. English and Russian forms are not parallel, though some regularities might be observed between them. English simple, it means indefinite, yeah, tenses denoting regular permanent actions correspond to the Russian imperfective aspect. So, you may see the translational examples. When expressing an action as a single fact, a simple tense corresponds to the Russian perfective form. So, yeah, the examples will be seen yeah, in your monitor. When a perfect tense expresses a multiple action that took place in the past and can happen in the future, the English verb corresponds to the Russian imperfective form. As well, you may see the examples in English and their translations in Russian. English perfect forms, when expressing a completed action, correspond to Russian perfective verbs. 
and to render the meaning of completion expressed by the perfect verb a translator has to use the technique of compensation and extension by introducing adverbs implying completion for example уже еще others etc okay so as homework you should translate this text the text is called summer and here we can find some sentences in passive voice or with articles and some other uh, English categories which cannot be found in the Russian language. So pay, pay attention to translate uh, this text into Uzbek or Russian uh, and of course consider what kind of grammatical skills you should use here. Summer is the warmest of the four temperate seasons, which also include winter, spring, and autumn. It occurs between spring and autumn. It is known for the longest days and shortest nights. The reasons start on different dates in different cultures based on astronomy and regional meteor meteorology. However, when it's summer in the southern hemisphere, it is winter in the northern hemisphere, and vice versa. Summer is traditional associated with hot, dry weather, but this does not occur in all regions. For example, the wet reason, uh, season occurs uh, during summer across many parts of the tropics and subtropics. Tropical cyclones develop and roam the tropical and subtropical oceans during the summer. In the interior of continents, thunderstorms are most likely to produce hail during the afternoon and evening. Schools and un universities have a summer break to take advantage of the warmer weather and longer days. People take advantage of the warmer temperatures by sending more time outdoors during the summer. Activities such as traveling to the beach and picnics occur during summer, summer months. Sports such as cricket, volleyball, skateboarding, baseball, softball, soccer, tennis, water polo, and football are played. Water skiing is a uniquely uh, summer sport, which is done uh, when waters approach the warmest of the year. So, I think it will be very helpful to translate it into your mother language. Thank you for, for your joining our presentation. May our information be useful for you today. Uh, you may uh, ask me if I have any kind of questions uh, through this email, which can be seen on the screen. Thank you. Goodbye.